in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome especially to those watching this by video. Today we offer Mass for Raphael Shekin Abu. And in our Gospel today, we're given the figure of Abraham, and we also hear about in our first reading, the great father of faith, the man of faith, who ventured out into the unknown at the call of God. With the coronavirus, COVID-19, we too are in the unknown. We do not know what is happening to us day by day. And so the figure of Abraham is particularly appropriate today as we ask the Lord to strengthen our faith in this time of great uncertainty. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God, Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh, splendour of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Be near, O Lord, to those who plead before you, and look kindly on those who place their hope in your mercy, that cleansed from the stain of sin, they may persevere in holy living, and so be made full heirs of your promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Abraham bowed to the ground and God said this to him. Here now is my covenant with you. You shall become the father of a multitude of nations. You shall no longer be called Abraham, your name shall be Abraham, for I will make you father of a multitude of nations. I will make you most fruitful, I will make you into nations, and your issue shall be kings. I will establish my covenant between myself and you, and your descendants after you, generation after generation, a covenant in perpetuity, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give you, I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land you are living in, the whole land in Canaan, to all in perpetuity, and I will be your God. God said to Abraham, You and your part shall maintain my covenant, yourself and your descendants after you, generation after generation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Consider the Lord and his strength, constantly seeking his face. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, the judgments he spoke. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. O children of Abraham, his servant, O sons of Jacob, he chose. He, the Lord, is our God. His judgments prevail in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, his promise for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. 
Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, I tell you most solemnly, whoever keeps my word will never see death. The Jews said, Now we know for certain that you're possessed. Abraham is dead, and the prophets are dead. And yet you say, Whoever keeps my word will never know the taste of death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? The prophets are dead too. Just who are you claiming to be? Jesus answered, If I were to seek my own glory, that would be no glory at all. My glory is conferred by the Father, by the one of whom you say, He is our God, although you do not know him. But I know him, and if I were to say I do not know him, I should be a liar, as you are liars who are by law. But I do know him, and I faithfully keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to think that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jews then said, You're not fifty yet, and yet you've seen Abraham. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, before ever Abraham was, I am. At this, they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and left. The Gospel of Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a lovely Jewish tradition, Midrash, that when Abraham died, God took him on a tour of heaven and showed him everything, including the Last Judgment. So friendly was Abraham with God. It's a lovely story. And it tells how important Abraham is in the Jewish tradition. And it sounds as though Jesus is referring to this, that Abraham saw his day. The Jews would certainly pick up that reference. And of course, the other reference that is even more powerful is when Jesus says, before ever Abraham was, I am. Echoes of the burning bush and Moses hearing God saying that he was, is, will be. The word is an odd word, but it's the same root as I am. So Jesus identifying himself with God, no wonder the Jews wanted to stone him. But we know that the identification was true. And so Jesus does indeed bring us eternal life. So whoever believes in his word will never taste death fully. Because we have eternal life. So what does that mean to us today as we face the uncertainty of the coronavirus? the difficulties that we have. It is really important that we value our life here on earth because it is a foretaste of eternal life. Eternal life doesn't start when we die. It starts when we're born, when we're baptised. We are in eternal life already and we catch glimpses of it in this world. And so the thing to do is to turn the events of our everyday life into moments of glory, moments of eternity. So how do we do that today? We're isolated. We're yearning to see one another face to face, to have those intimate moments that we're so used to with our families and friends. We're now distant. But we can turn that yearning into a yearning for intimacy with God whom one day we will see face to face, but today we catch only glimpses of. That's what we do. 
We use the life that we have here with all its difficulties and all its restrictions to remind ourselves that God wants us to have the fullness of life with no restrictions, with total intimacy with him and with one another, face to face, right up against one another, with one another. That's what God wants for us. And so this social distancing that we have to observe, to preserve human life, can remind us that our God doesn't want spiritual distance, he wants spiritual intimacy. And that's what we're called to. And so we can use the restrictions to remind us that the life God gives us is not restricted. It is boundless. And that's what's so marvellous. And so today as we prepare to celebrate Eucharist in this rather strange way where so many of us are separated in rooms, in flats, in houses, a glimpse of what God is calling us to in our hearts. In the Eucharist of prayer, we'll encounter Christ in our hearts. And that's the intimacy that will burst through this life into eternity. So let's join in prayer now for all those especially in need, those suffering the physical effects of this virus, those who today will die. Let's remember those hampered and imprisoned by fear. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness you have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine and water. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual bread. Blessed be God forever. Accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good of the good of all his holy church. Lord, look with favor on these sacrificial offerings, that they may profit our conversion and the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the same compassion of your Son, the whole world has received the heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. 
since by the wondrous power of the cross your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we claim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All light, all holiness comes from you, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. From the rising of the sun to its setting, you gather the people to yourself, so that the perfect offering may be offered in your name. And so, Father, we ask you, by that same Holy Spirit, sanctify these offerings, that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. And giving the cup to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. By your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and glorious ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favour on your church offering and recognize the sacrifice victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by his body and blood, may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us everlasting gifts to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints. With Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the blessed apostles with St. Joseph as spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all your saints, on whose constant intercession we rely for help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love of pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, with Vincent, our Bishop, the order of bishops, and all who minister in your church with the entire people you have gained for yourself. Listen to the prayers of the family that are gathered here before you. In your mercy, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who have please endure their parting from this life, with kind admittance for you. There we hope to enjoy the step and fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all his good. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Give us our Lord, and every evil, grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed those who call to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Say not the word of my self to you. Let us pray. 
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we ask your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. On a first Friday, it is traditional in this parish to have an all-night vigil, Mass at 10 o'clock on Friday night and 5 o'clock on Saturday morning, with adoration in between. We're going to continue this tradition on behalf of the whole parish. We're going to move it into the parish house, and by chance, our common room was the chapel when the oblates were here. And so it's quite appropriate to have Mass and exposition of the Blessed Sacrament in that room. And we're going to do this to continue this tradition, to show in a real way that our parish life has not ceased because of this virus. It's just got a different form. And so it will be broadcast on Video link, I think I know me, I have no idea what that means. Um, so please do join in. This Friday, first Friday, we're starting with Mass at 10. Adoration through the evening, different people will be doing different forms of prayer until 5 o'clock Saturday morning when we'll finish with another Mass. So please do join in, praying for our parish family at this time. There's going to be a full program for Holy Week, including a Holy Week retreat, and we invite you again at home to participate in it, as we will participate in various events in different ways. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessing. Be gracious to your people, Lord, that as from day to day they reject what does not please you, they may be filled instead with delight at your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you and keep you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thank you.